Welcome, folks. I'm Jabby Kawai, joined by Char Kirk. What's up? We're looking at Squid Game pitch meeting from Screen Rant. Thank you, Screen Rant, for allowing us to react to this. Very, very much appreciate it. If you guys haven't already, please hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, and vote this up to let YouTube know you're enjoying what you're watching. Oh, God. Thank God I got that burp out later. <laughs> I was like, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. If you guys haven't seen it already, this is the last time I'll sell it, okay? Okay. If you guys haven't seen it already, we have an interview with Ryan George on this channel. Please watch it. It was a lot of fun to do. I feel so fortunate that we got to do it, especially now that he's like this big Hollywood, you know, hotshot movie star. Yeah. Now that he's super famous. Now that, now that he's got a million subscribers. Now he's not returning our phone calls. So, uh, all right, let's jump into this. Here we go. So, you have a new series for me? Yes, sir, I do. Well, actually, this comes from our team in South Korea. Oh, interesting. Now, are you Korean? I'm not, no. <laughs> okay, and you're sure? Yes. Because, you know, you look like someone I might cast to play an Asian character in a movie. Yeah. And, you know, please stop doing that kind of thing. <laughs> well, no promises. So tell me about this show. Well, sir, it's called Squid Game. Okay, so this is like in the Shark Tale cinematic universe? Ah, well, actually, no, sir, because that's not a thing that exists. Interesting, interesting. Yeah, so this is a show where a bunch of desperate people play in children's games for the chance to win a bunch of money. How much money are we talking? 45.6 billion. Whoa. South Korean won. Which is also a lot in U.S. dollars. Okay, great, awesome. <laughs> so we're gonna follow this guy named Gi Hun, right? Yeah, absolutely okay. no and idea. He owes a bunch of money to loan sharks. Yeah, from Shark Tale. Nope. And so <laughs> after a guy in a suit slaps him around in a subway station a little bit, he gets invited to participate in this event that can help him clear his debt. Oh, getting slapped around by a guy in a suit is tight. Okay. And so he gets picked up in this van, and some gas knocks him unconscious, and he wakes up in this weird place with a bunch of other people. Oh boy. And so what's the deal? with this place. Well, everybody's in a numbered tracksuit and there are very angry PlayStation buttons watching <laughs> everybody. <laughs> so then these 456 players go into this other area to play a big game of red light, green light. And what's that? Oh, well see, you can only move forward when this massive horrifying doll isn't looking at you. Oh my God. And if the doll sees you move, you get shot and killed. Wait, what is this show? <laughs> so people start freaking out and running around and 255 people get brutally murdered. Murdered. What is happening? What is going on? <laughs> ah, well, see, the catch is this is a super secret organization with insane surveillance, and if you lose in a game, you die. Oh, very messed up. Yeah, it also turns out this cop who's following a lead on his missing brother, he's infiltrating this whole operation. Man, that's gonna be hard to do with all the crazy surveillance. Actually, it's gonna be super easy. <laughs> barely an inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, he just sneaks onto this boat that's bringing players to this place, and he kills one of the PlayStation buttons and puts his uniform and mask on. He just kill someone at the beginning of the investigation? Yes. He doesn't even know what's going on yet. Yeah, so he just does a casual little <laughs> Oh, that's little right! Because he needs the right clothes to keep investigating. Okay. And then he just kind of goes with the flow and pretends that he works there from there on out, and it keeps working. It works plot-wise. It works narratively because we know what happens. Yeah. We, we, you know, we forget that he doesn't know that you know, the things that we know. Exactly. I never thought about that before. It's kind of like messing with me because, yeah, character-wise, that doesn't make sense. He's a cop. Why would he he just like on suspicion of these guys being bad guys you can't do that right unless you can in korea but oh my god i, was, I didn't even think about that ah, ryan george blowing my mind as usual he thought the guy was gonna kill him so he killed him first that's just that simple you know and he started scanning him and then went boop boop no no -uh, that's not the one and so he killed him didn't check out and he's like he's gonna get checked out if he doesn't you know check out check this guy out yep but Lots of throwing him off the side of, side of the ship. Yep, there. goodbye. He's like good at improv, passable at best. He keeps being like, hey, what are you guys talking about? And the other guards are like, you know what we're talking about. You were there for the thing we're talking about. <laughs> That's right. I did wonder about that. Yeah. Like, come on, dude. Very like, shut suspicious. Up. <laughs> yeah, but somehow he keeps getting away with it. So he's sneaking around the whole time collecting evidence. With what? With his smartphone. And unlike everybody <laughs> in the games, this thing just won't die. Oh, neat. Anyway, yeah. so then the second game they need to play is this one where they need to cut specific shapes out of honeycomb candy without breaking the candy. Oh, yikes. So then Gi Hun figures out that if you lick the candy, that helps a lot. So he survives with like a second left, which is kind of his thing. 
Uh, solving problems mm -hmm. by licking things is tight. I never want to hang out with you. So then <laughs> yeah. players he realize did it twice that if they kill each other episode. during the off time, that improves their odds of winning. How do they realize that? Egg. What? So then at bedtime when the lights go out, it gets super violent. Players are gonna die? Oh yeah, a whole bunch of players are gonna die, and possibly a couple of epileptic viewers at home as well. Very cool. <laughs> Wait, what was that last part? And then the next game is a tug of war, where if you lose, you fall to your death. Oh, jeez. Does, does that stuff bother you at all? Like the flashing lights? Does I mean, not so much that I'm gonna, you know, have a seizure. I have not ever had a seizure in my life. But every time I watch one of those scenes, like in Titanic, when Jack and Rose are trying to get out from the bottom of the ship, you know, and the lights are flashing in their face, mm -hmm. I do wonder if I'm gonna have a seizure. Just mm -hmm. like, that. I just because just I've never had one doesn't mean I can't. I think because <laughs> like, you're a hypochondriac <laughs> yeah. that your brain starts messing with you. I mean, it's not pleasant. It's uncomfortable. It, that's that's mm -hmm. the point. It's supposed to make you feel unsettled and uncomfortable. Don't do that. Oh, jeez. Yeah, so pretty much all the main characters are on one team and then a bunch of random people are on the other. Oh man, I wonder what team is going to win. <laughs> oh, well, get this. The team with all the main characters wins. Oh. Yeah, the team with all the random unimportant characters we don't know, that team doesn't win. Oh man, I did not see that coming. Very unpredictable <laughs> for sure. So then after that, they're going to play the marble game. What's that one? Well, everybody has to pick a partner, right? And then they find out that with their partner, they have to play whatever marble game they want and the loser dies. Oh no. So there's this <laughs> Ali guy who's just the sweetest man, you know, not the brightest, but super loyal. Oh uh, man, yeah, that sounds like a great guy. Yeah, so he gets betrayed and shot in the head and dies. Oh, ouch, that hurts right here. And this girl from yeah. North Korea bonds with someone seemingly for the first time in her life. It's very nice. Oh, that's nice. Wait, no, one of them's gonna die. Yeah, so then her new friend gets shot in the head and dies. Oh, I don't like how this episode <laughs> makes me feel. And also, he <laughs> ends up with this sweet old man, and he ends up having to take advantage of this man's dementia in order to survive. Oh boy, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot. And so then after that game, the VIPs are going to show up. The VIPs? Well, they're these super rich elite types in animal masks, and they're here to watch the games and bet on them. Well, why are they just showing up now? Well, you know how when people go see, like, sporting events, they always show up just moments before they end? That's not accurate. And so I was thinking <laughs> no, in terms they come of the, for the VIPs, finals. it might be cool if, you know, writing and character and acting-wise, they all just, you know, came close to ruining the whole show. <laughs> what? Finally! <laughs> Finally! Someone called I, it out! I feel so validated. You right? I feel so validated. I've been waiting for someone to say it. I, I was like, please, like, at least Ryan George will have my back on this one. Finally, someone yes. said it. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I want to play that part again. Regarding what he said, though, about the VIP showing up later, narratively, it works better, just, you know, because of the structure to, to of the discover, show. Yeah. But, like, really doesn't make any sense. They'd be there the whole time, so. No, I mean, not necessarily, because a lot of people, like, maybe, I mean, I guess if you're a super duper sports fan, you want to watch all the games, but a lot of people just want to show up for, like, the semifinals and the finals. This is once a year. They'd be there from the beginning. <laughs> they would. You know what I mean? Fair point. I was thinking in terms of the VIPs, it might be cool if, you know, writing and character and acting wise, they all just, you know, came close to ruining the whole show. What? Just bring <laughs> everything down several notches. I thought that might be fun. <laughs> I guess. So then for the next game, they need to cross this super long bridge with pairs of glass panels, each made of tempered glass or regular glass. Oh, and they need to try to step on the tempered glass with every step? Exactly. There's no other way they could get across. What are the panels held up with? Some long beams on which they can definitely cross. Yeah, okay. I did think that. I was kind of like, well, I mean, if you kind of wanted to cheat and you were good at balancing, you could just walk on the metal beams that are holding Oh, up yeah, and wobble across. And just like kind of try not to fall down. But I figured that maybe if you tried to do that, you'd just get shot. Yeah. I don't know. Some, well, they should have shown like, someone trying at least. Yeah, though. at least. Someone you know. someone going like, what if I just, you know, walk down the middle? And so then eventually by the final game, there's just the main guy and his childhood friend left and they need to play the squid game. That's the name of the show. <laughs> it is. So what are the rules of this game? <laughs> Barely matters because they're pretty much just going to fight to the death. Oh. And his friend ends up killing himself, so Gihan wins. Oh, he does. And that cop finds out that this secret masked guy who was like running the whole game, it's actually his missing brother. Wait, how long was his brother missing? Oh, well, see, he missed his last rent payment, so that's what sent the cop on this search. This guy's running a massive secret organization and he doesn't have a system in place to pay his rent. That's what we're going with. So <laughs>
<laughs> That's right. <laughs> To not, you know, create suspicion. It yeah, doesn't or maybe give... maybe he just messed up that one time because it seems like he's been doing this or for a little while. Or maybe he doesn't care. Maybe he just doesn't care. Yeah. Maybe he wasn't thinking about it. But he also had a card in his apartment. Yeah, I, hopefully we'll have our questions answered in season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then the cop gets shot in the shoulder and falls. Falls where? All the way into season two if necessary. <laughs> okay, so does Gihan use all the prize money to pay the families of the people that died? No, he doesn't do anything for a full year. He just goes back to the life he was living. Doesn't spend any of the money. Well, what happens to the debt he had with the loan sharks? Unclear. Well, okay then. True. So then somebody from the Squid Game organization wants to get in touch with him because it's weird that he's not spending the money at all. That they get in touch with him by having somebody sell him a rose that has a secret little card in it. The main thing they know about him is that he's not spending any money at the moment, so they get in touch with him via a transaction. That's right. That works for me. <laughs> so then there's going to be this big <laughs> twist where we find out the guy who started the games is that old guy. Oh, I thought he was killed during the marble game. Ah, but see, we didn't actually see him die, so he must have had the guard, like, fire the gun next to his head or something, and Gihan wasn't watching. Well, what if Gihan hadn't turned his back? How did he intend to fake his death. I don't know. Fair enough. So then we find out the whole reason this guy started the games in the first place. Oh, and why is that? Ah, he was bored. Oh. Okay. And so then the old man dies of a brain tumor and Gihan decides to use the money for good. Nice. And hair dye. What? And then at the end it seems like maybe he's gonna try to take down the games instead of taking care of his daughter. Oh, okay. And so that's about it. What do you think? <laughs> well, it sounds like a good series, you know, and you think we can properly translate and dub this thing from Korean? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh. I read some comments from uh, Korean viewers um, who left comments on our videos. They were saying like certain words have double meanings. Uh -huh. So, you know, it's just hard to translate when you're not a native speaker. So okay. like, but that's, that's, you know, true of any time you watch a movie with subtitles, you just have to accept that you're going to miss out at least, you know, 10, 20% of the meaning. That's but true of just English to American. <laughs> I mean, like from England. Oh, like from England? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. You, See, you, I did a double joke there. <laughs> a double joke? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sure. Yeah. I mean, the Americans talking to other Americans sometimes don't know what the fuck they're saying. And so yeah. Yeah, it gets no. even worse when you go abroad to the UK. You're like, what was that? I know. <laughs> right, try try Scotland. Then no. you're all like, what the hell is everyone talking about? What is all this slang? Yeah. I wasn't lost in Scotland. You were and lost in London? I was lost in London. Oh, okay. You kept saying go on the tube. I'm like, what? <laughs> I thought this was great. I, I mean, I, I'm very happy with this video just because he called out the bad acting of those yeah. the, the English speaking actors and the writing as well. It just like all kind of fell apart there. I think that, you know, given that Netflix is this, you know, global company, I don't see why the team for South Korea didn't decide to like team up with someone from, I don't know, the States or the UK or whoever, whatever, wherever else that Netflix has English speaking teams mm -hmm. everywhere, I imagine, to create dialogue that, because Netflix knows that this, they had to know that this was going to be a global show because they put it uh, everywhere, just like 3%. Well, I think sometimes, you know, I don't really understand the marketing of Netflix. Apparently, they're very, very good at this stuff and they kind of have their finger on the pulse of what might be really good or they have a very good kind of Gage. marketing situation okay. where they're able to get the shows to trend somehow. Um, well, whatever, this was a really good show though, so no. I think it deserved the global recognition that it got. Netflix has their hand in every pot, right? Yeah. And so they, I, I get shows advertised to me all the time. Well before I was doing Indian stuff, I was getting shows advertised to me for international stuff. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just a smart move on Netflix's part because then they, they're not only making money in the country that it's designated for, they're making money in other countries as well, or they're giving you more reasons to stay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, like Money Heist, for instance. Yeah. That, that's an international show now. Yeah, and that, and that was a show that wasn't doing well uh, in Spain or wherever it was originally. Right. And then when it was put on Netflix, it suddenly found new life and super duper popularity on Netflix. So. All this to say, I just wish that they, that Netflix bridged two teams together, just at least for that section. Like, 
with the English actors because that dialogue was just so clunky and weird and the acting was weird. And for me, it's like it, it did bring the show down a couple notches, at least during those portions. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Some of the things that he he brought up, it's like, of course, it's stuff you, that you don't think about when you're watching it. Like him killing that bad guy on the ship. Yeah. When he didn't even know like the bad guy's intent. He didn't know what was going on there. His investigation barely began. He's already killing some dude. But to me, I took it as a threat because me as the audience, I know this guy is threatening his life. I didn't think twice about that, but the-, the It was a good point. Yeah, the, the thing where, uh, he, you know, Gihon hasn't spent any money, yeah. and they know this about him, and they were just banking on him spending money. But I guess maybe they knew that he had 10,000 won, was it, what's it called? Yeah, won. Uh, maybe they knew that he had 10,000 won on him, and that he, you know, he spent part of it. Or that he was, you know, a bleeding heart that would, you know, take pity on an old woman who's like, oh, I haven't made any money. And he's like, fine, just take my last 10,000. There you oh, go. Oh, wow. So a lot of people have looked this up. Oh. 45 billion won to USD is $38 million. Wow. Oh, that's 38 million? That's what I saw. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Not to... Not to be sniffed at. Yes. <laughs> that's nothing to sneeze at. Oh, whoopsie. <laughs> 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 Sniffing, sneezing, rust in translation. I'm not very good at like. <laughs> not to be sniffed at. Don't sniff at me. I've, I'm pretty sure I've heard my dad say that before. Not to be sniffed at. It's not to be. What? Nothing to sneeze at, because I mean I don't know where that comes from, but in my mind, sneezing means blowing it away, oh. <laughs> but not to be sniffed at. <laughs> Like, you know, just to, to stick your to nose be, up and be like... <laughs> to be snooty? Yeah. <laughs> so the whole thing with the rope game, where they had all of our main players on one side and yeah. these, like, nondescript players on the other side, I, I thought that even though you knew the guys that we're rooting for were going to win, because it's like, would the show really just kill all of the main characters off? No. I wouldn't put it past the show. I did. I, I did at a certain point because it's like... I don't know. I just I think I, I think initially because of, you know, our experience with Korean show like movies and yeah. stuff, I was under the impression that like anything goes, anything could happen. Any sort of weird, messed up, you didn't expect this to happen, whatever, like that could happen. But I guess maybe because it was for a Netflix audience, they kind of tried to keep the the main characters in the show or I, I, I think the know. problem is that you know that there's more episodes. If you didn't know that, then you wouldn't. Then you would be uncertain as to whether or not they were going to live. Right. But because you know there's like four more episodes, you're like, well, they can't die yet. We just can't. And they put all the main characters together, so they're like, okay, they can't kill all the main characters off that we know. Right. It's just that's saving that for for the Marvels episode. <laughs> it's just so unlikely. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's just it's highly unlikely that they would do that. Um, because of what was happening up to that point, they certainly surprised me with the Marvels episode, though. Like you just said, like th that certainly caught me off guard. I'm like, whoa, they just, they were saving, like you, okay, you, I didn't hear you, honestly. You said, I thought you said Marvel's episode and just nodded along. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I don't know what that means. I'm not sure what Marvel's I'm is. I'm pretty sure half the time you hear sounds coming out of my mouth and you just nod, you know, just no, like, just nod and smile, it, nod and smile. It, mm -hmm. it, it clicked and I'm like, oh, that's what she said, Marvel's. Yes, yeah, that's right. I, I said Marvel's. Yeah. Yes. It sounded like Marvel's. I'm so, not very good at speaking. So, yeah, the Marbles episode definitely caught me off. So they say, well, I guess because of the rope episode, they made you feel safe and secure for the moment. Like, oh, see, our main characters are okay. Right, yeah, because they, they were all like, oh, there's safety in being a team. And then in the next episode, it's like, just kidding. Being in a team means that the person that you care about is going to die. Right. But anyways, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I, I appreciated this. I, I feel... Vindicated. Vindicated, redeemed. I don't know, like, because no one else was talking about the the English speaking aspect. No so. one, no one had the guts, <laughs> I feel. I feel like, well, also because it had nothing to do with breakdowns. Like they, they were such, their acting was such that you could just kind of skip past it and be like, whatevs, it's exposition. We don't really care about them. Right. But I'm glad that Ryan George brought this up. And you also don't see a lot of people, even with Ryan George, you don't see a lot of people deep diving into the cop. Like, they, not a lot of people are talking at length about the cop for some reason. I think it's because, you know, we spent so much more time at, with the other characters and, like, we really cared about them a lot more. Mm -hmm. I do think, 
I mean, I think it would be a missed opportunity to not bring the cop back. I feel like they've yeah. set it up that they're gonna they're gonna bring him back, and, and maybe we'll <laughs> where, learn where more about him. Where did he fall him. into season two, presumably? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out. I'm Jabby Kawe. This is Achara Kirk. Peace out.